long renowned for its guest services in ritzy slopeside lodging and its ban on snowboarders, Deer Valley has been a go-to option among top-priced ski resorts for years. The resort offers a decently sized footprint, varied terrain, and impressive mountain infrastructure, although there's no denying the resort appeals to a certain crowd. In this video, we'll detail Deer Valley's overall mountain experience, and then we'll go over how the resort fares in our mountain score and overall rankings. Before we jump in, be sure to check out our website, peakrankings.com. These videos take a lot of time and effort to put together, but we've already written reviews, comprehensive rankings, and analysis on Deer Valley and over 50 other North American ski resorts up on the site. Additionally, be sure to like and subscribe to help us grow, and be sure to hit the bell so you don't miss any of our video content. Deer Valley's defining characteristic is its hospitality. You'll find staff ready to carry your gear around at multiple base areas, and the mountain offers complimentary overnight ski storage for up to seven days. The resort offers multiple mid-mountain lodges with high quality but expensive dining options. You can store your skis with staff during the day at many of these. If you get cold after a long chairlift ride, you can warm up in cabins at the top of Flagstaff and Bald Mountains. Deer Valley offers just over 2,000 acres of terrain with a gentler footprint than many competing Utah mountains. Visitors of all abilities will be able to find something here, but the terrain caters more towards families than adventure seekers. Deer Valley isn't a bad place for beginners, and most mountain areas have at least one green trail. However, there aren't really any areas with lots of beginner runs. The Wide West Bunny Slope at the Snow Park base is small, but it's at least sectioned off from other terrain in the area. However, aggressive traffic from harder terrain does filter in to some greens. Deer Valley is well suited for intermediates thanks to a large quantity of intermediate cruising terrain. Most mountain areas offer a number of blue trails, with the best pods being off Flagstaff and Bald Mountain. Double blue trails tend to be relatively steep for intermediates, but they're generally groomed. However, a surprising number of blues and double blues actually remain ungroomed throughout the season. While Deer Valley doesn't offer the same quantity of difficult terrain as competing resorts, the mountain does offer a decent mix of steep mogul runs and glades. Some trails were used for events during the 2002 Olympics, and they maintain their jump and bump setups today. Deer Valley's advanced and expert glades are really a highlight of the resort. A good chunk of glade runs consist of carvable, easy to navigate aspen tree terrain, although a small percentage of these require hiking to get to. There are a few bullish areas at the highest elevations, but the above treeline terrain doesn't last for long. Deer Valley does have a few formidable expert trails with especially steep drop-ins along the upper mountain daily chutes. But besides these, there's very little true expert terrain here. You try to go skiing to get away from it all, but that's not the case at Deer Valley. The vast majority of the mountain feels built up and artificial with a constant presence of roads, condos, and luxury hotels, even in some higher elevation areas. But the worst part about all of this development is that it has practical implications for the resort. Unlike many other Rockies resorts, where skiing basically anywhere within the bounds of the lifts is fair game, these developments are private property, causing some terrain access restrictions across the resort. While most of these areas are cat tracks and really not worth skiing, Going outside the bounds of the resort counts as a misdemeanor. You'll need to get to the top of Bald Mountain or Empire for the only truly isolated terrain at the resort. On the plus side, the resort offers fantastic views of some neighboring peaks, including those at nearby Park City, as well as the Jordanelle Reservoir below. In addition, many will love the looks of the widely spaced light tan aspen trees. Deer Valley consists of a series of neighboring mountains rather than one big mountain, and as a result, navigating the resort can be challenging at times. Getting up the mountain really isn't bad, but the problems start to manifest when you try to go down. In many cases, you'll have to take at least one lift to get down from higher elevation areas to lower ones. While the resort has a 3,000 foot vertical drop, it's not even close to possible to ski it directly. You need to take three lifts to get from the highest elevation Empire area, 
to the lowest elevation Jordanel base. And that's basically only if you sacrifice your run down Flagstaff Mountain. Unless you take the green, catwalky, homeward bound trail, a ride up the short but slow Judge or Viking lifts is warranted too. The Ruby and Homestake Express lifts, which provide key resort egress, can get backed up in the late afternoon. The development on Deer Valley's footprint creates some weird access restrictions. Despite being along the lift line, you actually can't access the Black Diamond Square Deal and three ply runs from the Quincy Express, as the top of the lift line goes through private property that isn't skiable. Instead, you have to take the much slower Red Cloud lift, which only goes halfway up. But Deer Valley does its part to keep things moving. The resort employs clear signage that makes staying on the right path relatively easy. The resort has been investing into its infrastructure over the years, and many key lifts that used to be slow, fixed grip chairs have now been upgraded to high-speed quads. Nearly every part of the resort now sees high-speed lift service, and many areas can be reached through multiple desirable lift options. Ticket scanning is quick and easy through RFID gates. The resort caps ticket sales each day, which helps mitigate excess crowding. However, this cap can fluctuate, and lines have somewhat increased since the resort started accepting the Icon Pass. If you plan on coming here, it's recommended to buy your tickets ahead of time. It's also important to note that if you're using Icon Days, you have to call ahead to reserve a spot on the mountain to guarantee yourself access. At Deer Valley, you'll find the light, dry snow that Utah resorts are known for. However, those expecting constant powder may be slightly disappointed, as the resort doesn't see nearly as much accumulation as nearby Alta and Snowbird. Some argue that the ban on snowboarders improves the snow quality, but we haven't noticed much of an impact. The resort employs extensive snowmaking operations to ensure a dependable base. The snowmaking guns are movable rather than fixed in one place, and when in use, they're housed in these green boxes along the trails. It's also worth noting that some mountain areas stay open until 4.15, allowing for longer ski days than at many competitors. As a result of Deer Valley's long vertical drop, lower mountain areas see significantly more variable conditions than upper. Conditions in the lowest elevation Jordanelle Valley can deteriorate to white ribbon status, but the gondola from the Jordanelle base allows for downloading in the event of poor conditions. Luckily, the existence of multiple higher elevation base areas allows you to skip the lowest elevation parts of the resort entirely. Deer Valley is for those who want to be pampered on a ski vacation, not for those who want the biggest and best terrain. Not everyone will love it here, but for those with an Icon Pass, Deer Valley may make sense as a family-friendly trip for a few days. However, one-day adult ticket prices are insane, with prices starting at over $200 a day. For far less money, you can hit several other resorts with better snow, a bigger footprint, or more diverse terrain. So now let's go through how Deer Valley fares in our mountain score and stacks up in our rankings. Snow quality is very good, on par with many other Rockies resorts, but not up to the same standard as the Cottonwoods, and the resort gets an 8 in this category. Key resort areas stay reliably open throughout the season, and despite variable natural snow and lower elevations, snowmaking keeps these areas open, earning the resort an 8 for resiliency. Deer Valley is just over 2,000 acres, and our independent acreage calculations confirm this number, giving the resort a 7 for size. Deer Valley offers a little bit of everything, but expert and above treeline terrain is somewhat lacking, and the resort gets a 7 for terrain diversity. Deer Valley is not an expert-oriented mountain, but it boasts a few formidable chutes and a surprising quantity of intermediate mogul terrain, the resort is just tough enough to earn a 7 for challenge. Deer Valley's lifts are mostly modern and high speed, but a few minor areas are only accessible through slow fixed grip lifts, and the resort gets an 8 in this category. Crowdflow is helped by Deer Valley's cap on ticket sales, but the resort has a few choke points for getting down the mountain and gets a 6 in this category. Facilities are some of the highest quality we've seen, both in terms of hospitality and environment. Select resort areas are pretty far from the nearest lodge, but the resort still earns a 9 in this category. 
Navigation is helped by clear signage, but the resort's layout is annoying to get around, with mandatory lifts required to get from higher elevations to lower ones, as well as some high-consequence intersections and flat runs. The resort gets a 5 in this category. And lastly, mountain aesthetic. Deer Valley is surrounded by some truly breathtaking scenery, but the resort is just egregiously built up. You never get the feeling of isolation you should at a rocky ski resort, and the resort gets a 5 in this category. These categories add up to an overall mountain score of 70, with Deer Valley 5th in Utah and tied for 23rd overall. The resort might be the right place for you if you're attracted by its outstanding guest services, family-friendly terrain, and cap on ticket sales, but you might want to skip it if you're not into the ban on snowboarders, built-up artificial mountain aesthetic, or less diverse terrain than some other Utah resorts. Deer Valley is a solid mountain, but you'll get a better value for the experience at nearly every other resort out there. Let me tell